Third time is the charm. This is my third gold back video. My first one was one of the most popular videos on my channel for a very long time. Jeremy, one of the owners of Goldback, actually reached out to me in July 2020 asking if I was interested in doing another video for you fine folks. I kind of ghosted him. I didn't really feel comfortable trying to sell something to people that I myself wouldn't purchase or use. That being said, was my initial impression of the Goldback wrong? I know a lot of people are giving these notes a rosy review, but here are my thoughts on the gold back. Again. Hey everyone, welcome to Campbell's Coins. Full disclosure, I don't have any relationship with the company who sells gold backs or any company making gold notes. I haven't accepted any form of payment, including free gold backs to make this video. I felt it was necessary to revisit this topic as it's been a couple of years and I've been getting more questions about these. As I've mentioned before, I've already done an in-depth look of the gold back and you will find that here as well as links in my description down below. So I won't go into all the details here in this video. But to quickly summarize, the gold back is a local voluntary precious metal currency that circulates in Utah, Nevada, and New Hampshire. Each gold back is one one thousandth of an ounce of pure gold, and there are five denominations, a one, five, 10, 25, and 50 gold back. The one gold back has one one thousandth of an ounce of 24 karat gold, and their largest bill, the 50 gold back, has 1 20th of an ounce of gold. Anyone can purchase these notes online and use them as accepted, but it is not a legal currency. Valeria makes these notes for gold back, as well as other gold notes for other companies. I've listed a link to Valerium's website where you can explore everything about the different gold notes. When these came out in 2019, the company mentioned that these were used in the state that they were designed for. Based on that, I said in my video that they could only be used in those states. I think the company quickly realized they were really pigeonholing themselves by having a narrow usage. They then changed the messaging to these can be used anywhere, accepted, although they still list the state on them and they still put at the bottom for circulation in Utah or whatever state is listed on the note. If they really wanted them accepted everywhere, they should have just made a stateless gold back and put a voluntary legal currency for free states and people. It would certainly be less confusing. But I digress. Let's look at some of the pros and cons. The designs of all the gold backs are simply stunning. Each is intricate and the designs harken back to another era. It is very rare for me to be taken back by something, and these are simply works of art. I think the design is perfect for what Goldback represents. They really nailed it with each of the different designs. I also like what these Goldbacks do, not only in terms of using gold for commerce, but they get people thinking. Maybe one person in a thousand looks up gold as money, and it begins them on a journey to financial freedom. I like that these are made out of gold. However, this is where the pros end for me. The premiums on these goldbacks are very steep. The exchange rate listed on the goldback website is 375, and that is of January 9th, 2022. That's just for one goldback. If you buy 1,000 of these one gold backs, you would have a full ounce of gold. At the exchange rate, the cost for that one ounce of gold is $3,750. But what price are you paying? The exchange rate or the rate retailers sell these? The answer is the rate from retailers. The price of the gold back is said to be built in and accounted for when used for a purchase. People talk about how goldbacks retain their premium and are 
more of an inflation hedge than physical gold itself. Here is the problem with the gold back premium aside from them being so much higher than their weight in gold. Gold backs were produced to use in commerce. Each hold a specific amount of gold and the premium for each used to be slightly above those premiums. However, pricing to acquire gold backs is not stable. Let's say you purchase gold backs off Atmex for $5.75 each, but another place, Jim Bob's gold backs, sells them for $4 each. Let's say you go to a store who accepts gold backs. A gold back is just a gold back to them. They don't care that you paid more on Atmex for your gold back than the other person who bought them off of Jim Bob's website. Your gold back purchases the same amount of goods as the other person's but you paid more in dollars for your gold backs. It's not like this grocery store bases its pricing off Atmex premium. They value it based on what the gold back says gold backs are worth. So if gold back values their gold back at 375 and sets their product to that exchange rate, you're paying a lot to just transact in gold backs. The premium from Atmex is nearly $2 more. That's 65% premium on top of the regular gold back premium. Imagine if you bought a thousand of these off of Atmex, you're paying $5,750 for one ounce of gold. This goes without saying, gold backs are not a viable option for stackers. If the company wants gold backs to be taken seriously, they need to sell them for the exchange rate, not offer them at various pricing at different retailers. Let's say that we live in make-believe land where gold and silver are regularly accepted as payment. Would I still like these? My answer is still no. Silver should and can be used for small purchases. Tell me what the gold back does that a silver coin cannot do. Other than weighing less, I don't think a whole lot. A silver half dollar has a melt value of $8. Ten of these coins can purchase your groceries for the week. They are already recognizable and made for circulation. They are also more durable than a gold back. If weight is an issue, I believe I referenced silver certificates in my last video as a viable option. These would be lighter than the gold backs and offer more purchasing power. Plus, if they are destroyed, no precious metals are damaged. They can just be printed again and replaced as long as the printing is tied to the amount of gold and silver stored at the treasury. Remember, we live in make-believe land. If people claim that junk silver, also known as constitutional silver, is too difficult for the population to understand, I would argue it is no less difficult than explaining one gold back doesn't equal one dollar and trying to get people to understand the true fundamental value of gold. I also mentioned in my video, I would rather have actual gold coins over these notes. At the time, 1 20th of an ounce of gold was actually 30 to $50 cheaper than the 50 gold back, which is also 1 20th of an ounce. Now prices for the gold back and the 1 20th of an ounce gold coins are roughly the same. Premiums have risen dramatically on fractional gold. My answer remains the same here. I would rather buy one gram gold bars than purchase gold backs. If I had to sell, I feel the gold bars would be more liquid to an LCS or within the Instagram community than any of these notes. One of the issues I brought up was durability. I felt, and I still do to some extent, that these are fairly delicate for everyday usage. I was worried about crinkling them and due to gold being so soft, they would just wear away. They list on their website, creasing a note will cause them to break down faster. One of the reasons they made a specialized wallet to hold these gold notes was because of their susceptibility to damage. One viewer mentioned in my old video that if a gold back gets damaged, it can be sent back for a replacement. I haven't looked up to see if this claim is remotely true. My last issue is education, which really doesn't have to do with the gold back. My girlfriend isn't into stacking. She knows about gold and silver because I've introduced it to her, but it's not something she cares about. I asked her a hypothetical question. Let's say you don't know anything about gold and let's say you work at a restaurant. What would you do if someone left you a handful of these as a tip? She said that it would intrigue her and that she would Google what they are. 
However, I don't believe the majority of Americans care or know about gold and silver, let alone gold and silver as money. We've all seen the video where people are offered a 10 ounce silver bar or a bar of chocolate. A lot of people chose the chocolate bar, even though at the time the silver bar had a $150 value. They simply don't know any better and therefore they don't care. In the comments of one of my gold back videos, someone mentioned something that I didn't think of and I think it's really worth mentioning here. They said that they liked the gold back as a gift or for tips. I think that's a great point. But the recipient really has to have a fundamental understanding of gold and I don't think that most of the population does. I don't think that people will appreciate these notes as a gift if they don't know anything about it. The stacker community knows better and we try to convert people over to the true money side. That being said, when the United States implements a CBDC, the central bank digital currency, the majority of Americans will accept it without a second thought. I'm certain we are headed in that direction. I stick to gold backs not offering a solution out of that mess. That current physical gold and silver coins or bars don't offer already. Bottom line, I like the thought that went into these. I'm certainly not attacking this business. I know what goes into creating something out of nothing and it sucks to have someone crap all over it. Unfortunately, it also sucks to review products sometimes and arrive at unfavorable conclusions. I circle back to my conclusion of my last two videos. I don't see gold back and other gold notes like it as worthwhile. The gold backs don't solve any problems. Yes, they've made fractional gold possible for everyday commerce, but that's about it. Again, how is it different from fractional gold bars or coins or even silver coins? You need to solve something that fixes a problem for it to be a game changer. If done correctly and honestly, I think a digital currency backed by physical gold and silver would be a game changing event. Now we would just have to trust our politicians. If you're interested in other topics like this one, check out the other videos I have on my channel discussing these metals and how they can help you preserve and protect your wealth. Thank you to all who made it this far in the video. You guys and gals are my super stackers and collectors and I appreciate you. Thank you all for watching. This is Campbell's Coins and that is my two cents.